What's going on guys, Zoomer Value Investor here. Here to talk to you guys today about a stock I'm extremely excited about. I haven't been excited about a stock like this since probably like my Abcellera or Clean Spark full analysis videos. I think my last full analysis video I've done was Hasbro. And Hasbro's a cool company and all, and it's done well in the market so far and all that, but I have a lot more fun when I talk about these huge, huge, huge reward opportunity type stocks, such as the one I'm talking about today. Intelia Therapeutics, NTLA. This is a biotechnology company headquartered out of the Massachusetts, Cambridge kind of area, the Harvard kind of area. The reason for that is reasonings you will find in this book right here, Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson. Now, I would say if you have any type of like science background, you took like molecular microbiome in college and stuff like that, um, this maybe isn't like such a necessary read. But I would say if you are looking seriously into a company like Intelia or even CRISPR Therapeutics, CRSP, very similar company I will talk about later in this video. Um, I would say definitely this, this is a read I would want to put on your list because what this will do is, is this book will familiarize you with not only the story of CRISPR and the technology that is CRISPR-Cas9 that came out around 2012, this will also give you a gestalt analysis of kind of around the background of DNA kind of starting around the 1950s with uh, Watson Crick and um, Rosalind who made the actual like structural discovery of DNA. So um, really great that you'll get that background kind of like understanding of how our, our scientific understanding of like life and how we can conduct life science has evolved since 1950. And then of course it talks about everything you gotta know about, about CRISPR around you know 2012, around circa the year it was invented. And that's what it really talks about is, you know, CRISPR is a device, if you don't know already, it is the gene editing tool device where it's almost like a scissor, right? It goes into the human code of nucleotides, A, T, G, C, makes certain, you know, insertion or deletion edits. And by editing these strands of DNA, um, the genes or the instructions of the body produce changes into the body. and. They've been using this to discover um, cures for diseases, and that's largely what Intelia Therapeutics does. CRISPR is owned by the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, and they talk about this, of course, in the book. And of course, that explains why Intelia is headquartered in a place like, you know, the Cambridge, Harvard kind of area. But what I think is really interesting is the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, they're kind of free licensing this CRISPR tool out, like, until, like, 2030. And why wouldn't they? I mean, this is an amazing tool that is obviously going to go on to cure many different types of diseases. And I think they really want to spark that kind of like, you know, innovation of, hey guys, let's get going. Let's figure this stuff out. Let's see what types of things we can spark a cure for this with. And they're not really profit focused at this time. They're more, you know, and, and especially the Broad Institute, like as a kind of university back institute, they do kind of have that. It's like a university based, it's almost like a Hippocratic code kind of like based reasoning to, um, of course, you know, license out such a life-saving type of technology such as this CRISPR-Cas9. So what is Intelia? Intelia is a biotechnology that uses this CRISPR-Cas9 tool and has had a good moderate amount of success with it. Actually, I would say arguably has kind of like select, put itself well, head and shoulders above a lot of other biotechnology companies that have played around with this tool and has really put itself on the kind of like Mount Rushmore of currently publicly traded companies that use CRISPR technology and are actually able to show tangible results, show tangible points on the board through published research studies. The most famous one, of course, being the New England Journal of Medicine that is highly, highly, highly reputable journal high reputable source, uh, has a huge, huge, huge um, credibility rating, has a huge, huge, huge peer review uh, structure, and has a huge, huge generalized clout when it, as far as it goes with research journals. Now, the New England Journal of Medicine, in 2021, they published an article. One of the leading authors on this article was John Leonard, MD. John Leonard is the CEO of Intelia Therapeutics. Now, in this article, 
they discuss the product NTLA 2001. Now, what this is, is it appears to be a CRISPR-based tool that seems to have cured ATTR amyloidosis. If you don't know what ATTR amyloidosis is, it's a very serious disease. It affects about one in every 5,800 people. What I think is even more amazing is there's really two types of uh, ATTR that really causes disease burden in, pe in people. ATTR um, PN, uh, that's the polyneuropathy one. It's more of like kind of like a brain um, focus there. And then the ATTR um, cardiomyopathy, that's um, more, you know, the cardiovascular system. So that's ATTR CM. And Intelia, you know, NTLA 2001, this CRISPR based tool seems to have been a substantial cure for both. And this New England of Journal of Medicine article, they were starting the doses around 0.1 milligram. Uh, per kilogram and anywhere from the 0.3 milligram per kilogram and the 0.3 milligram per kilogram group showed a little bit better results I incredible around like 90 percent uh success rate on the ability to you know reduce the burden of disease uh that's what people in the trial reported symptoms of disease subsided around 90 percent now the dose that they give now that seems safe and substantial and has around a 95 percent effectiveness rate in recent trials is one milligram per kilogram. This is really exciting stuff. There hasn't been any super adverse uh, reports from any of the uh, phase one trial collection data so far. So right now NTLA 2001 is in late, late stage phase one testing, looking to move to phase two as at the end of this year, 2023, um, a data report will come out that will it is scheduled to come out at least and it will report the findings of um, any kind of adverse reactions any kind of like symptoms from this treatment and um, it will report uh, as well you know um, very more efficacious efficacious and um, useful data regarding um, the reduction in disease burden. What's great about NTLA 2001 is Intelia is set to receive 75% of those hard profits, you know, upon, you know, marketability and approval of this drug. And Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, a very high kind of moat uh, pharmaceutical company, high market cap company, tons of money going through their, you know, research and production systems. Um, they're stepping in as a partner help alleviate a lot of those costs uh, with, you know, research and development of this uh, CRISPR-Cas9 therapy. Even when <laughs> a lot of, honestly, the forward-looking, profitable nature of this company comes from, which is honestly the ATTR cure. I mean, it's a cure for a significant disease. Like, this is definitely going to be worth billions of dollars if this is approved and it is as it seems to be as of now, which is a very effective therapy that doesn't really have any huge adverse side effects. So the euphoria on the stock was really when the New England Journal of Medicine article came around, which was in 2021. This is mid to late 2023. The price that we can buy these stocks at, vastly, vastly different. People were paying comfortably over $100 per share in 2021. We're getting this stock in the like mid $30 range. There's really been nothing but positive developments about the story since then. Um, they figured out the dosage amount. They like the higher dosage amount. It shows a better cure and reduction of disease burden rate of around 95% compared to what it was around the high 80s and 90s in the original New England Journal of Medicine article. So I'm really liking like what I'm seeing. I think things seem to be going on course. Even honestly, if you put in the conservative estimate, right, of around like 25% chance odds that everything goes through with their ATTR um, getting out of phase one, because phase one is notorious, right, for things failing in phase one. Um, I believe the average drug gets out of phase one with like 18% rate. Um, so I, I'm bumping that up to 25% because they've gotten through the early stages of phase one. But um, even, even, you know, if I do 
all that, just, you know, the 25% chance in my model, which is less than a coin flip, not, not great odds. I still believe this company should be worth around $80 per share. And, and that's because of just the hefty amount that this here could, um, produce as far as like cash flow and, um, just, you know, the money that would come in from all the insurance companies and all that, from all the people who would rush over to get, um, you know, their therapy that would cure them. And, and there is the question, right, of how many of these people affected by HTTR would not want to go get the therapy, at least not right away. And they would want to continue doing their, um, you know, continual medications or whatever it is they need to do um, to sustain themselves. Um, but it might be a matter of their physician just kind of like finger wags them and sends them over to the therapy anyway. We'll have to see uh, what the FDA says, recommends, and all that. Uh, and honestly, this is looking to get approved in towards like 2025, 2026. So really interesting time to get on board with this company, if you're asking me. And the, the reason why I'm saying even if their main therapy, right, in TLA 2001, even if it doesn't get approved by the FDA, even why I'm saying this stock could be worth so much money is you have to consider this is their head and shoulders above anyone in the CRISPR-Cas9 therapy game right now. Like who else has a, who else has gone through late phase one with the FDA with a CRISPR tool? You can't name many companies. There's literally like Intellia and then CRISPR because CRISPR is doing the, the sickle cell thing. Um, Cigar SP, that, that company, and then you can't really name anyone else. It's Intellia. Like, they're really the two big, biggest players. And I might be leaving out a couple, but that's when I would say, like, the term Mount Rushmore. Because then that's like, you have Intellia, you have CRISPR, and then that leaves, like, okay, let's say I'm leaving out, like, two companies. That's still, like, four. That's, like, a Mount Rushmore of CRISPR companies. You're buying into the, the Mount Rushmore of this, like, generational tool. I mean, imagine it's, like, the year 2002, and you buy into a company like Amazon or Microsoft. Now, let's talk about their other huge moneymaker that's coming through the pipeline, NTLA 2002. Now, this one is a HAE um, cure. HAE, again, another serious disease, another very serious market for this disease. So the fact that they're getting this through the late phase one, really exciting for this company. I mean, it's two cures. Like, that's incredible for this price point around like three billion market cap. You get so much for paying this three billion market cap um, price for this company. You get ownership uh, in part of the pie with, you know, this team that's this elite CRISPR Cas9 therapy scientific team led by, you know, the CEO, John Leonard. And then you get ownership in, you know, the development of these generational drugs and even these other like tools, um, therapies that are coming through the other parts of the pipeline. But, you know, ownership in these two cures, HAE and ATTR, that's incredible. And the other thing is like ATTR just needs to get approved for at least one of the types of ATTR to make significant cash flow. So it, it is possible. I think if you ask me, I think ATTRCM um, cardiomyopathy, I think that one makes, makes maybe a little bit slightly more sense to me. If there was a scenario where only one of the types of ATTR got approved by the FDA, I think the treatment of, you know, NTLA 2001 for cardiomyopathy, um, ATTRCM, I think that looks to me a little bit, a little bit more likely and I think that um, HTTRP and HTTR polyneuropathy, I think that one may, maybe looks a little bit slightly less likely to be approved. But I think that the base case of them both getting approved, I would put it around like 20%. Like I think it's pretty good odds that they could both go through. Um, but then, you know, you can maybe, if you have a more conservative mo model, adjust the polyneuropathy number to probably like 15%. And then you could maybe, you can maybe even like play with the um, CM number a bit of like 20 to 25, maybe even bumps to 30. I think it looks pretty good for the odds of the cardiomyopathy, especially to get approved for Intellia. So the amount of disease burden this would take away from people, crazy, because, um, you know, when you consider, consider this disorder from HTR, which is really like a trans protein misfolding, um, and they kind of like, subsequent disease burden that produces on the body. 
like when you consider like taking that away and how that affects about one in every 5,800 people, whew, I mean, that's, that's going to like do so much for humanity and do so much for honestly the medical technology market. So definitely something to be excited about. Obviously, Intellia is not a profitable company right now. Honestly, we're at right now, I believe this company around the three to 3.5 billion market cap, um, that puts it anywhere around like, you know, the $35 to $42 range. Um, I believe this company is priced for none of these therapies to get approved, none of these like huge cash flows to come in, um, none of these huge upsides to happen. I think the market is very bearish on biotech in general. You even look at the SBI index. I think this is just a great time to invest in biotech in general. I think the market is way, 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 way too bearish and just cast away at how important this is going to be for both alleviating disease disease burden in our human future. It's also going to be huge for extending longevity and just kind of like keeping, especially like the boomer generation, the generation that holds a lot of the global wealth, keeping them like sustained and living and without um, as much disease burden as possible into their later years. And it, it doesn't really make sense when you look at the biotech index for it to be this bearish. But as we know, you know, um, here at the Zoomer Value Investor channel, if you read, you know, any of these books I recommended, Morgan House, Psychology of Money, um, Peter Lynch, One Up Wall Street, um, Intelligent Investor, Ben Graham, you know, this just happens all the time. That market ir irrationality happens all the time. So. I'm not too surprised seeing this and that's why I'm aggressively looking into biotech stocks like Intellia that get me so, so excited about the future. And the company does make like, you know, a few million off of research and partnership revenues. Um, kind of reminds me of AppSeller and how they make a few of their million in revenue. And they have been really good about uh, producing a high return on, you know, year over year revenues and just revenue growth through this research. But again, you know, um, this lab kind of work, this isn't going to really be where the money is on this company. And this isn't going to be what's causing the company to like double. And I believe this company could, you know, triple quadruple as um, the bull case being approval of drugs, you know, any of these drugs, HAE, um, ACTRCM, ATTRP, and any one of those approvals, huge return on this company. And as well, um, as this company kind of like establishes themselves as a leader, in the CRISPR Cas9 like market, because I think that this CRISPR Cas9 technology, I think it has a lot of tailwinds behind it. I think it has a lot of ways to go the next 10 to 20 years out. Um, when you consider what this is gonna do for the healthcare market, how much like money is gonna get pumped into this and you know come out of this and disinflationary technology kind of end of it. 